Hey everybody, Jessica here and I'm going to walk you through everything you need to know for the new Shimmery Swirls collection. And as you can see by the um, display images, I was really inspired by like metallic paints and shimmers. And I had a lot of people asking me to do some collections that were more smooth. So I kind of put everything together and made this really fun collection. So to start off with, you know, I've got a document open. I've got nothing loaded really. Um, it's just got all the standard swatches and I'm going to show you how to load your swatches and do all the fun stuff. So to begin with, um, I actually, well, actually I do have these styles loaded as separate libraries, but um, what you need to do to start off with is uh, you can load up your swatches and there your swatch panel might be in another space, but um, just look for your swatch panel. Click here and you can click open swatch library and you can go other library if you haven't already have it opened and uh, I'll just go here and click shimmer golds so I'll click open and it'll pop up there so I had just already done that so and you can do the same thing with the silver and that will pop up into a separate free floating uh, library. So you've got all your style swatches here, which is just really great. One click application. There's really nothing too, um, nothing too complicated about that. But I also, um, you know, in true fashion, I always want to make things easier for you. So I always think ahead like, hey, what if you want to do these in color? Because a lot of times when you get some illustration or something, you get a clip art, you know, some vectors. You've already got it colored. Now you want to do the style. So... I have the actions as well so that it can do that for you automatically. And it's really something just very easy that you do via the appearance panel, but I, I like to automate it so that you don't have to do that every time. So if you don't have your actions loaded, um, go find your actions panel, click on the top right side and click uh, load actions. And then you can find your actions here and load them up. I already have them loaded up. They're called shimmery swirls, so that's good to go. The only other thing is if you're going to use the actions, you need to load the VIP swatches and they need to be in the swatch panel, not a free floating library like this or they won't run. So that's something I always emphasize. So I'm going to go here, open a swatch library, I'm going to click other library and I'm going to find my um, VIP load in swatch uh, panel. So I'll click open and it's going to pop me up a free floating library like the other ones did. But what's very key is you have to click on the gold and click on the silver so it loads up in here. If they're not in here, your actions won't run. It's very simple, but I always have to emphasize that um, just if you're going to use the automation action, which you don't really need to use the actions. I can show you how to do it manually and it's quite easy, but just so you know. So everything's loaded. I've got a little vector here and uh, I can just go through and let's see here, select this, maybe if my mouse would work, and fly through here and apply these golds. Super easy and you can just see how easy that is. So same thing with the silvers, fly through there and uh, check out all the cool silvers. Very easy. One um, one of the actions that I have, um, let's find a pretty one here. Okay, so one of the actions that I have is to make the gold neutral. So if you're going to use that action, you simply select your item and uh, you can, let's see, why do I have a group here? Actually, I'm going to clear this out here. I didn't realize this is a group. Not that it will change the action, but it just annoys me. So I'm going to object compound path make. Okay, now it's all nice. <laughs> um, so I've got this object here and uh, I want to make this gold neutral. So I simply select that fill layer. And this is something I, um, a lot of people don't realize about Illustrator, but the appearance panel is so awesome. And if you're not making use of it, you should totally make use of it because um, it's like a little mini layers panel. And so like a lot of the, uh, what do you call it? The, the principles of adding some fill layers and stuff are just like in Photoshop. So I've got that and I can just press my action, press play, make gold neutral. And all I simply did was at, in the appearance panel, I added a fill layer 
of black and I changed it to 35% color. So now that that's more desaturated. Um, so I, I make the actions, but I always show you what I did and it's really quite simple. So that's the uh, making the gold neutral if you like a little bit of a more of a not so yellowy kind of gold. So that's one of the things. I'm going to clear this out. And what else do I want to show you? Um, you can add shimmer to color. So let's say that I have, you know, you add these, you want to add these styles to a color. So let's pick a cool color. Um, okay, that's fine how it is. So I like this, but I want to have these effects not in gold, not in silver, but in color. Well, most of the time you've got something already colored like this. And all you need to do is look for the action that says add shimmer to color. Make sure you're touching your fill layer um, right here on the appearance panel because if you have a stroke or something, it'll put that, it'll add that next fill layer on top and so your stroke could look funny. So I always tell people it's not massive, but just make sure you're touching that fill layer. So you just touch that fill layer and then you run your action, add shimmer to color and bam, it's gonna add it um, on top. And now I'll tell you what that action does. So what that action does, it's not a lot of magic or anything. I simply, just like I would do in Photoshop, I added another fill layer on top of that color. And that fill has my pattern and I changed the opacity to luminosity. So it's just that easy. It's just like adding a pattern overlay on Photoshop. Um, super easy, really um, just simple. So uh, one thing that I will let you know is that you can uh, click on the opacity and you can also ch play with the different opacities like if you want to try some different effects. Hard light is really nice if you like that really intense effect. Can you see the difference between hard light? So I have, I put the silver one on there because that way you can play with the different uh, opacities, but that makes it really cool, like a really cool brush stroke, which I really like. So I've got that. There's another action on here to intensify and darken the style. So I've got my object selected and I've got like my pattern selected. So I can just play this action and that just intensifies it a little bit. And all that simply did was um, not a big mystery. I add a fill layer a black fill layer over on the top of it. I put it to overlay and I put it to 20% opacity. So I always want to show you what I'm doing with the actions, but tell you what you're, um, what it's doing. Cause all these things you can do on your own as well. Um, so let's see here. We've gone over that. We've gone over intensify and darken style. Um, add shimmer to color. We've done that. Uh, Okay, so now I'll just show you, if you've used any of my systems, you know that I have a prep type for actions thing. So what I do is, um, you know, if you take your type and you just add the gold styles, you can add that no problem. But I'm going to just make them black. But if you're adding more layers and stuff, um, I have an action that just, if you look over here in the appearance panel, you don't see the color actually, you see the type characters. And what my prep type for action prep type for action does is it adds um, a fill, so it just uh, gets it ready for more advanced editing or whatever. So, if you want in gold or silver with a type, all you have to do is select it, just fly through here. But maybe if you have a color type or something, um, you want to prep your type for your action. So that's what I'll show it to you. But the type, the this is really cool. So you can just fly through here, check out all the fun, shimmery styles. And you can always move. Um, in Illustrator, patterns are kind of fixed. So if you don't get exactly the right um, like effect that you want, you can move it around and uh, see where the pattern is and everything. And if you're really like, oh, I want these brush strokes to look just like this, you can always rasterize it so that it's um, uh, when you're done and you like where the pattern is and everything uh, so it doesn't move around. But anyway, that's a little bit about Illustrator. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'll show you the prep type action. So I'm just simply going to press play. All it does is add a fill layer. No big deal. So then let's say, oh, I want this to be like blue. All right. So we've got that. And as we see, the blue fill is... Um, uh, over here. Now I could go and now if I want to add my style to my color then I'll just press play 
and so that way it'll do it automatically. And as you see, it's a little bit light with luminosity, so um, that color and that style, so I might add it to hard light. So it's super, um, you know, super fun, easy. Really, I, I just like to go over everything in detail, but as you see, um, the gold and silver styles are just one click. You just go like this. Um, you can't, you really can't get any easier. I had a lot of fun making these patterns in Photoshop. And uh, one thing I want to touch on that I saw on some other systems is, um, you know, they talk about 100% vector effects. And when you're getting some of these like really, uh, really advanced kind of styles and everything in Illustrator, um, I, I was looking at some of those things and Sometimes 100% vector effects can be a little bit uh, overhyped, I think, because um, for one, it makes the file size enormous because all it's, you know, all you're really doing is taking this, um, this style here, you know, like a pattern, a raster style, you're rasterizing it first of all, and then you're going to do the image trace um, function that's in Illustrator and you're just going to trace it. But it's going to, as you can imagine, it's going to create so many paths with these kind of um, styles and everything that the file sizes are just huge. And most of the time, like I make my patterns big enough that you just simply don't need to do that. Because another um, of the features with that of, you know, going through that, rasterizing them uh, and then image tracing them so that they're, you know, quote, 100% vector is that like if you have type or something like that, it's not going to be editable afterwards. So just a little um, uh, note about that. But in the future, I might add some actions that, you know, we'll do that for you or whatever. It's not really a, a big uh, complicated deal. You could just do it yourself. All you have to do is just go edit, um, you know, object rasterize and then go object image trace and it'll trace this and make it 100% vector. But what my point is, is that most of the time that there's just no point in that unless you're going to be enlarging your um, thing to like bigger than a paper size. So that's just a little note about that. But um, having the alive effects and the live raster style makes it great because then you can, um, you know, everything is like live or whatever, but uh, you can always change it. So that makes it really nice. So I think I went over everything for the um, the new styles, and I just like to make sure that I go over everything in real detail. But as you can see, most of it is the gold and the silver, just super easy. And I just um, I kind of made this like on a the pattern is kind of a circular thing, so it has that nice. There's always like a nice um, paint kind of a circular motion on for the like the brush strokes and to look like paint so I hope you like the styles I had a lot of fun making them and uh, I'm gonna I have all kinds of good ideas so I'll be coming out with some more stuff really soon all right thanks